We are with uh, Bruce Wilson, and uh, Bruce Wilson is the own, owner of Waypoint, a 41-foot lagoon uh, catamaran that is in New Orleans, Louisiana, and uh, he's prepping it uh, for a, uh, a, a crossing into Tahiti and Australia in a year or two, and this is the first install of electric propulsion on a production model with Lagoon in the year 2001? 2003. 2003. Okay, and do you want to say? There, there were three Lagoons built in 2003 that were done with electric drive. This was the first one, the other two are Paradigm and Magic. This one went into charter uh, with the catamaran company down in the British Virgin Islands. So it took the usual heavy charter abuse. Um, now, one of the things that we've discovered is that because with electric drive you have unlimited torque at zero RPM, these nine horsepower engines, one per hole, are actually two four and a half horsepower engines back to back. Uh, and since this was the first, I, I believe that uh, Dave Taylor, who designed all of these systems, uh, really just looked at the numbers and felt that putting a pair of nines, nine horsepowers in here uh, was more than adequate. Well, I've come to believe that it is way more than adequate. Uh, with unlimited torque at zero RPM, you can bully the boat around. Uh, the, the torque is so great that from hull speed, uh, just over eight knots, you can stop this boat in under a boat length. But at the times that the, the people have attempted to do that, they tend to break the coupler. Uh, <laughs> there is so much torque. Now these, these motors are capable of drawing over 100 amps, but we find that with less than 50 amps per side, we, we are at hull speed. So that is quite an appreciable uh, uh, tolerance. Now, the problem I have is more to do with long distance cruising, and that is that these motors turn into generators when you're sailing. And you know, there's the, the, the props are just a regular three blade prop, and you would think that having that prop drag, you know, it probably decreases us by about a knot, but there is a technique for sailing electric boats, <coughs> excuse me, called regeneration, in which uh, as you're crossing a swell, you generate power going down the back side of a wave and you use that power going up the front. So net result, uh, negligible, neg negligible drag as you're sailing. So in, in effect it count, cuts out the disadvantage of having a fixed bait prop. The advantage is that all day long while sailing, and particularly if you're doing long distance sailing where you're out for weeks at a time, you're generating power. We typically generate near a kilowatt uh, constantly at, when we're sailing at seven, eight, nine knots. Uh, and it's become my belief that, in fact, to start the regeneration process, I'm overcoming the back EMF generated by two motors which is twice as much and I could get by uh, I would I feel now that I would have been very comfortable had this only been four and a half power or one half of these each side because that would be less back EMF to overcome to go into generation mode and I would probably actually end up generating more net power now with that power generation while you're cruising it means that we permanently run refrigeration freezer uh, a lot of electronics because we're simply generating a kilowatt of power day and night while we're moving. So the water maker, uh, we can produce 400 gallons of water a day, it's more than we can use, uh, but you find that you, use it, you, you turn everything on to use this power and in fact Dennis English, the original owner of the boat, told me when they brought the boat from France over to the US, uh, brand new, that they literally were just turning stuff on to use up the excess power that they were generating. Now, from a long distance cruising perspective, uh, you know, you're out to turn it around and try and eliminate any piece of weight you can, so I kind of look at it and go, I would have been very comfortable if this boat was only equipped 
with a pair of four and a half power horsepower engines instead of a pair of nine horsepower and I believe that I would probably have done better on the power generation side while sailing than I actually do at the moment. End result, am I very happy with what I've got? Absolutely. <laughs> uh, it's just things that you think about and observe. Um, I, I literally was surprised at how little current I was pulling in these engines because most of the time when we're motoring we're not trying to do whole speed we're quite content to push along at five and a half six knots where these engines are capable of drawing a hundred amps plus I'm typically only using between 18 and 30 amps so if I want to go a bit faster I typically sit there in, the, in that low end 30 amp range and if I'm in amongst other boats uh, you know, coming into a uh, uh, upper river or into uh, mooring facilities or something, I am typically just creeping along, drawing less than 15 amps an engine, and still doing three or four knots. And uh, the gen set's not even necessary because you have all the battery propulsion. Okay. Yeah, the, I downsized the batteries in here. Originally, the boat was equipped with Lifeline 210 amp hour batteries and just the nature of the boat being in charter and the original generator on the boat meant that the people chartering the boat tended to be charging the batteries uh, at you know, the, the generator is capable of delivering 120 odd amps at about 168 volts and the original generator had no automatic charging control on it so they were literally uh, cooking the batteries and I believe the boat went through quite a few batteries when it was in charger, in charter. Dennis changed out the uh, generator uh, from the original HFL that all three of the original lagoons got over to a Fisher Panda custom built generator that has auto control on it. So now we set the voltage at which we want the charger to turn on, we set the voltage that we want it to turn off, you go hit the auto on button and don't touch a thing. It preheats, it starts up, it charges the battery bank. When the battery bank is charged, it turns itself off, it sits there, you use power, and when it is, when it gets down to 50% charge, which is where we've got it set to turn back on, it just automatically turns on and charges up again. Now, when we're long distance sailing, that's a very rare event because of the amount of power that we're producing. Uh, it's more when we're just day sailing that that yeah you know, we're out for the day. We're not caring about how much power people are using. Uh, we're not caring whether we've got air conditioners on. Of which I've sat at anchor overnight on this boat with the aft air conditioner cooling the the uh, sleeping quarters and not had the generator turn on in the course of the in the course of the night. And I understand you have a dimensions inverter. What what size is it? Uh, six kilowatt inverter. Uh, which is is capable of powering all of our AC requirements on the boat. Uh, the advantage of that inverter though is that it will take AC or DC, uh, sorry it's not that, it's the charger that will take uh, AC, DC, 50, 60 cycle, 90 to 265 volts. So we can pull into any form of shore power in the world and plug in and charge our batteries. Yeah. And, and you know, since the charger is a 30 amp charger, I can comfortably pull anywhere in the world through the inverter, uh, even though it's a 6 kilowatt inverter, I can comfortably pull 30 amps anywhere in the world simply by plugging the battery charger into shore power. Uh, and since our intention is to take the boat across the Pacific, we're going to be dealing with you know, French voltage down in Tahiti, I think they're 230, I'm not sure whether they're 50 or 60, but across the assorted islands, not the whole world is, uh, is uh, 120 volt 60 cycles. So that automatically took care of this thing, of this, of this problem of having to worry about where you go and what sort of shore power you've got. Um, so, uh, and in fact, that that is not just the uh, main bank charger, you know, the 144 volt bank charger, it's also the house charger. You know, the chargers are, uh, one's made by Victron, I can't remember the name of the other company, but both of our battery chargers, so the house bank as well as capable of accepting any power. And it's just a very convenient thing to simply have a couple of different adapters and the only thing, the only safety precaution 
is our selector switch allows us to switch between different shore power voltages. We've rewired the boat to be able to achieve this.